In this video, I'm going to tell you why the Canon EOS R7 is the new perfect starter camera for filmmakers, and I'll compare it to the more expensive Canon EOS R6. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, so if you've watched some of my older videos, you'll know that my former favorite starter camera was the Canon EOS M50. Then after a while, I sold my M50 because of the largely inadequate autofocus in 4K. And if you're a filmmaker, this is important because you should be shooting in 4K by now. Which brings us to the Canon EOS R7. The R7 has solved many of the issues I had with my M50. And I think that the R7 really gives the more expensive R6 a run for its money. So let's dive in. Before we get too far, I should mention that I'm usually pretty Canon loyal. My first camera was the Canon XL1 Mini DV, and I currently shoot all of my videos on the EOS R6. I love the Canon sensors and the look that the Canon lenses deliver. And that eye detect autofocus is a game changer. Nothing against the other brands, but that's where I'm coming from. So in this video, I'll be comparing the Canon EOS R7 to the older and more expensive Canon EOS R6, which is the camera that I shoot on. Let's start with the specs. First, let's talk price. The R7 will run you around $1499 US dollars for the body only, while the R6 body only is $2499. So for $1000 less, you can get a hell of a camera that's comparable to the R6. And for those of you looking to get a lens package, you can get a kit with an 18 to 150 millimeter lens for around $300 more totaling $18.99. The 18 to 150, in my opinion, is a great versatile lens that will let you shoot not only close-up scenes and portraits, but farther away events like sports or landscapes. It's a great starter lens. All right, so the similarities are as follows. Both the R6 and the R7 are mirrorless cameras, which is the way to go these days. And if you want an explanation of what makes mirrorless cameras better, check out my other video explaining this, which I'll link in the description. Okay, so the R7 has two memory card slots like the R6. The R7 has a nice three inch very angle touchscreen like the R6. You can spin it around in any direction and you can focus, modify menu items, even record your video right from the screen if you want. It's great for vloggers who need to see the image and hit record without being behind the camera. Both the R7 and the R6 have the same lens mount, the RF mount, which is a nice standard size, not like the smaller M50s mount. Both the R7 and the R6 have external mic inputs and a hot shoe that accommodates hot shoe mics. And I always stress using an external mic for your videos to get the best audio. And the R7 and the R6 both have a DigiX processor, which makes for super snappy autofocus, which locks focus onto your subject. The eye detect works unbelievably well in the R7, even in 4K. And you can even choose a preset to match your subject people, animals, or vehicles. Your camera will know what you're trying to follow. And here are your options on the R7 when you're shooting 4K video. You can shoot in 2398, 25, 2997, 50, or 5994, which is comparable to the R6. And for super slow-mo, you can also do 11988 in 1080p. Now for some of the differences. First, and probably the biggest difference and the reason for the price difference, is that the R7 has a 32.5 megapixel cropped sensor with a 1.6 crop factor, while the R6 has a full frame sensor. For those of you new to sensors and why sensor size matters, put very simply, cropped sensors crop your image. It's not the end of the world if you've got a cropped sensor, back up a bit to get the rest of the image, but for those of you who want to capture more info right where you are, the full frame 36 by 24 millimeter full frame CMOS sensor on the R6 might be a better choice. Another big difference is that the R7 supposedly has unlimited video record time, while the R6 has a 30 minute limit. This means that if you have a big enough SD card and enough battery power, it will keep recording indefinitely. 
provided it doesn't overheat, while the R6 stops after 30 minutes and you have to hit record again. This is kind of awesome, and I see it as an advantage that the R7 has over the more expensive R6. So the R7 gets my vote in this area. There are also some ISO differences too. The R7's photo ISO range is 100 to roughly 51,000, while the R6's range is 100 to 102,000 in auto mode. So if you take a lot of stills and low light performance is important to you, you might want to drop the extra thousand dollars for the R6. And without going too much into other specs, I'm going to stop there. Overall, I think the R7 really gives the more expensive R6 a run for its money and will give you a really capable camera that allows for growth. Here's the short list of what I really like about the R7, including other miscellaneous things that I haven't mentioned yet. The camera itself feels ergonomically good. Not too heavy, not too light. It feels substantial. The RF mount rather than the smaller mount opens you up to the RF lens series, so I like that. The autofocus in 4K is solid. This was my biggest problem with the M50 and Canon fixed that. It has a mic input, which most mirrorless cameras do right now, but at one time that wasn't the case. I also really like the unlimited record time on the R7. The limited record time has been a problem on occasion with me for the R6. I also like that Canon has moved the movie setting to the on off switch rather than keeping it amongst the other still photo settings. You no longer have to spin that other dial around just to find the movie settings. It's just one click beyond on. I kind of wish it was there on the R6 too. So the R7 gets my vote there. And I think that just about covers it. I'm sure I'll think of something as soon as I hit post, but there you go. Do you own the R7? What do you like and dislike about it? Leave a comment below. All right, let's do a quick tip. When I get a new camera, I usually get an extra battery. And when I do, I usually number them, one and two. Why? Well, because I like to use my batteries roughly equally, so their life is similar. I use battery one, then on the next shoot, battery two. That way they get roughly equal wear and tear. And I don't end up with one battery that's being used all the time and one that sits in my bag. So ensure that your batteries get used equally by numbering them. And you won't have to replace one sooner or guess which one is the good or bad one when you're on a shoot. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted and I will catch you next time.